Um, okay, so we're all ready for our number one top Hunger Games moment of 2012. Okay, is everyone ready? I'm bringing out the wait, real wait, 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 wait. Can I can I guess? Can I guess what it is? Yes. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I, I know what it is. The world premiere of the Hunger Games in Los Angeles. <laughs> no way. Yay! Um, so you know, a pretty expected choice. You know, I I I, I mean, we t- you know, if you want to listen to episode 50. We talked all about it on episode 50, and I'll play a clip from episode 50 in a minute. But I, you know, I, I don't really even have enough words to describe how special that experience was to me. Um, you know, we were all invited by Lionsgate to see the world premiere, so we all went out to L.A. Um, you know, Adam and I got to meet people from all of these other fan sites that we had been talking to online for ages we stayed in a house with down with the capital, um, yes, which was <laughs> which was so fun. Like seriously, um, and it, and we just had so many great opportunities out there. Like we got to go to the Hob, which was the world premiere camp site. We got to meet cast members there, like Jack Emerson, Willow Shields, Isabel Furman, Alexander Ludwig, Jennifer Lawrence, Josh Hutcherson showed up. Um, I can't remember who else was there, but, I mean, that was amazing. And uh, we had a camera crew from Nightline following us around. Um, So if you, you know, saw that episode of Nightline and you saw us, I ended up being interviewed by the L.A. Times for something. Um, Just so much, like, crazy stuff happened out there. I mean, it was definitely the the experience of a lifetime. Um, Adam, do you have any thoughts you wanted to share on that? No, experience of a lifetime, I think, is a perfect description of that. I've, I've gone on record as saying this, but getting to meet everybody, uh, a lot of the people that I had not met ever in, in person, that was the coolest thing. I mean, that that sort of was a subplot when we were originally, you know, going out there, but that ended up being, for me, as great as the whole movie experience was. That's, I think, what I'll never fully forget because um, you don't get a chance to, to experience weekends like that very often. And uh, this is a little bit of a, a, a note for, your, for you kids listening. As you get older, uh, these kinds of moments are, are fewer and farther between. So uh, it was so, so special. And uh, I know that uh, with Catching Fire, I'm not going to take any moment, not even a second of that for granted, assuming we all go in, and do that again. Um, I, I just literally can't wait. It was, it was so much fun. I'm just trying to think if there's anything. I mean, we had that party. We had, like, this this party at the house we rented, and we invited all of the fan site people. We invited the Katniss Chronicles people. They came. There were just, like, tons, like, tons of people there. There were so many people. I mean, it was really a blast. And I think the coolest thing, I, I keep saying cool, but it really was cool. Like, you know, we had all been communicating online for so long and then when we all met in person like it really wasn't any different you know we all really liked each other and felt you know as if we'd known each other for a long time and it was just very very nice anyone else want to add anything rebecca aldrin crystal ariana we had a live stream we did yeah, have a live was... stream yes yes live stream that was so good with like the worst video quality yeah next next year we'll probably do a live stream again but we'll make sure that we have um like a really good webcam or something um but yeah the live stream was crazy the fact that aldrin that you even made it in was like yeah. amazing yeah maybe I should, yeah because i wasn't actually invited to the premiere i um i was just planning on going to the Capital Short, was that what's called, Capital Short Party? Um, and then <laughs> people had told me that they didn't run out of, uh, like, passes to go into the hub to camp out for tickets for the premiere. And I was like, huh, I should just try to go. And I, I got lucky enough to actually go and make it into the premiere. So I was super excited. And obviously I, I wasn't part of uh, Down with the Capital at that time. I was just a, a mayor. So it was very surreal getting to, like, meet everyone and hearing uh, Adam and Savannah's voices in person for the same time as they meet them, or, or everyone that, that is on the podcast. It was like, whoa, like, I've only heard these voices on HG Fireside Chat, and now it's real life. Um, but it was amazing. And we, you know, I mean, we met, like, a lot of other great people. Like, um, we met these two 
we met this mother and daughter who had been capital extras in the film. Like, you know, just really oh, fun. Yeah. They were so nice. Yeah, I know. They were so sweet. And they, they camped out and got tickets, I think. Yeah, the, the whole thing. I mean, we could seriously talk about that day, that weekend, like, forever, but we won't. So instead, I will play a clip <laughs> from episode 50. And episode 50 aired on March 19th. So this was the first episode Before we did. Before you play that, Savannah, before you play that, I do want to say, one thing that was should not be forgotten about that weekend were Crystal's incredible desserts. Now that yes. I got that out, you can you can continue. Well, you know what's really <laughs> funny is I actually I had okay this clip is three minutes long, which is really long. The others were only about a minute, and the clip originally was like four minutes long because I left in part about you part part of the clip with you talking about Crystal's cupcakes. But I deleted that section so that the clip would be shorter. So I'm glad that you just mentioned the cupcakes. And you also talked about Beth and her cake balls. Yes. The, oh, my God. Those were so good. <laughs> um, anyway, no one listening even has like, any clue what we're talking about. So, um, yeah. So this clip is from episode 50, which aired live on March 19th. And this was the first episode that we did after we got back from Los Angeles and the world premiere. And you'll hear a few different people talking in this. I know that Teresa from Down with the Capitol talks a bit about what it was like to see the movie. I think that we hear Courtney from Welcome to District 12, so we'll just have to listen and um, see exactly who it is. Okay, so here we go. I guess what I would say is, and this is where, I, again, not to get all deep and philosophical here, but for all of us, we were so caught up, at least I was, with the hype and meeting the cast and doing these things and what was going to happen before the movie started, that it's almost like when the actual movie began, it was like, oh, my God, we're seeing the, the real Hunger Games movie because I don't, barely had time to really even think or process about that because of everything that was leading up to it. And I think, do, do I speak for everyone here when I say once the movie actually started, that we were just completely sucked into a, a whole new experience because I I felt like I had left the world of premiere of Los Angeles of everything and it was just me having this intimate moment with the screen, seeing this movie I looked forward to for so long and so happy not to be disappointed and then it turned out to be great. Ariana and I were clutching hands for like a good chunk, so it was like we were together. Watch. I, and I think there, I think uh, a lot of the other fan sites were that way too, holding on to someone sitting next to them, or, or, or uh, you know, it was like, um, I mean, I started to choke up the moment Gary Ross walked on the stage. So, and Ariana's like, not now, <laughs> trying to tell him not to cry. And then, I mean, it was like the moment, you know, it came up and it said Lionsgate. I mean, our hand, we immediately, I mean, it wasn't, we didn't even, we weren't even looking at each other. We just grabbed hands, like, oh my gosh, this is real. You know, so so it was kind of like a joint little experience. Yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty awesome. They they basically sat all of the fan site people together. Um, so that was really cool to sort of be in that kind of fan site zone and be able to look down the rows and just kind of see everyone. It was very comforting for me anyway because I, I was, you know, before the movie started, I, I yeah, I was losing. Like, like Adam said, some people came out on stage and gave speeches. I started bawling during the speeches. Um, so it, I, I was, it was very comforting to know that, that all of these people were near me. Um, Adam, did you want to talk about the speeches? Yeah, I did want to say that there were two really amazingly memorable moments that I'll never forget from before the movie was introduced. And this was... The way it works, basically, is I think we're allowed to say this because I I don't think anybody, any one of us has anything bad to say about this. Someone from Lionsgate came out and introduced Gary Ross, and then he kind of talked about, mentioned everyone in the cast, and brought out first Liam Hemsworth, which he made. What was his joke? He said, I shouldn't have picked an Australian actor or something like that when he spoke for a second. Um, and then Josh Hutcherson and then Jennifer Lawrence came out. Um, but the first highlight for me was that Jennifer Lawrence, First of all, when they announced that she was supposed to come out, she came out a little bit too early. You're all going to love this. Everybody's listening. She came out too early, realized it, and kind of jumped back behind the stage in a way that was so awesome. Like, it just shows that she's so down to earth and funny and quirky, just like all of us. 
That was that was my favorite moment of the night was because it was like the spotlight like went in that corner of the stage and then it went off and you just saw like the gold back of her dress like just whip around. <laughs> <laughs> So okay, there's that, that moment. That's the end. That's, that's the end. Yeah. The end. yeah. That I, I was, was thinking that wait, it went on a little longer, but it didn't. So there was that moment that you mentioned with Jennifer Lawrence tripping. <laughs> that was a great moment. Well, not a great moment, I guess, for her if she was embarrassed to trip, but yeah, well, could a great moment happen, that showed, so, showed her personality. So like, like we heard there, she started to come out too early, and then she had to, like, hide back behind the curtain. And then when they were going back, she tripped. And then Josh Hutcherson pretended to trip her again, like he acted like he was going to step on the back of her dress. It was it was just fun, you know. It was very fun. Like I don't know, the whole the whole thing was really cool. Do you remember? Um, you know Donald? what? I was thinking. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Go ahead, about Donald Sutherland. Well, I was, I was just going to say, do you remember what Donald Sutherland did? Salute Rue to the fans action. Yeah, he gave the three finger salute to all of the fans in the theater. I- I think he was staring straight at Aldrin and Natasha back there when he did that. He was. It was directed. <laughs> <laughs> right, right directed there. Directed to them. No, no, but I'll, I'll tell you, I what I was thinking listening to that clip right there, and it made me kind of excited, was just how animated we all were. Clearly we were coming off this extraordinary high, <laughs> and it made me just think about, like I can't wait to do a show after after seeing Catching Fire, hopefully under the same circumstances. Yeah. Just, like buzzing with intensity, so that would be great. 